Hello, uh, welcome to another video. Um, this is one that I haven't really done before, or this style of video, um, but it's something that I'm going to probably be doing more, uh, which is kind of tutorial videos, um, questions, answers, that kind of thing. I thought the easiest one to kick off with would be bushcraft versus survival. Um, and more specifically, bushcraft knives versus survival knives, because I see this popping up all the time. People asking questions, you know, what are the differences? Uh, what defines a bushcraft knife versus what defines a survival knife? And um, so I thought I'd run through, them, through that today. I have a range of knives with me, ranging from a very sort of traditional bushcraft style blade all the way up to like the high sort of giant survival -y type blade. So, I mean, honestly, the, the, the characteristics of whether it's a bushcraft knife or a survival knife, there's a, it's not binary. There is definitely a gray area in between, and there's certainly a lot of knives that kind of fall somewhere in the middle, and uh, we'll kind of look at some examples of that today. So with that in mind, we need to think about what our needs are with a knife, uh, whether it's a survival knife or whether it's a bushcraft knife. Um, for bushcraft, we're going to need it to mainly process wood. Uh, so whether we're making firewood, maybe, maybe we're making camp furniture, maybe we're making tent pegs. Um, so that's kind of where, in my mind, a traditional bushcraft knife sort of falls into, that it's mainly used for woodworking or for wood, wood skills, green wood skills, kind of things like that. Survival knives need to be much more versatile. You might not be lost in a forest, you might be lost or you might be in a survival situation in an urban environment or in the desert or, you know, any any sort of environment that you can imagine being stuck in in a survival situation. And so your blade going to have to be a little bit more um, versatile and a little bit more useful in different scenarios that isn't just for using, uh, for cutting wood. You could be having to pry something open. You could be, for example, trying to get a can, an aluminium can open of, for food. You could be trying to break a lock on a door. You could be doing any, all sorts of things. Um, so your knife will have to be able to deal with those things. Um, so with that in mind, I think the first thing that we can consider is grind, knife grind and the angle of the, of the knife. So here we have uh, three very sort of uh, traditional looking bushcraft blades um, or what would be considered quite traditional bushcraft style blades. And the reason for that is it's got this Scandinavian edge on it. And what that means is the blade has been designed to allow when it's being pushed through wood to like push the wood on each side of it away from itself. It's a very good um, knife edge for dealing with wood. And because of that, it's going to be really useful for making tent pegs for um, making camp furniture and things like that. Not very good for food, but it's not really designed for that. It's really designed for the woods, for uh, woodworking. And then if we compare that with something like what we have here, which is uh, the SE4, this is very much considered a survival blade or survival knife. And what we have here is a, what's called a flat edge or a flat grind. Um, and I'll show you another example of that here. You can see this on, the, on this K bar. It's much flatter and then we've got this sharpened bevel on the end. And it's going to be a lot more versatile for lots of different types of uh, tasks that aren't necessarily just bushcraft tasks. So like we said, if it's maybe food prep or maybe it's cutting things that aren't necessarily wood. So maybe you need to, as we said, open a can maybe or maybe we're cutting up some plastic bottles or something like that. This edge is going to be much more versatile and much more useful. It's a little bit more rounded, all rounded. It's a bit of a jack of all trades and it's not going to be as good with processing wood the way that a Scandinavian grind will be. But overall, it's a little bit more versatile. So edge geometry, definitely a consideration when you're cons comparing a survival knife versus a bushcraft knife. So the, so the next um, the next criteria or the next sort of factor when you're thinking about whether a knife is considered a bushcraft knife or a survival knife is materials and maintenance. Now this one is a slightly sort of ambiguous one because there's definitely knives that fall in the cracks in, in, in regards to this. If you, want a, a, if you want a survival knife, you want something that doesn't need too much care and maintenance. You want something that is going to be a bit sturdier and a bit more impervious to the elements, to things like oil or things like chemicals and things, um, because you don't know what you're going to be dealing with. A good example would be um, 
this guy, which is the Falcon Even S1X. And these are actually issued to, not this specific model, but the Morkniv um, F1 is issued to fighter pilots in Sweden um, as their emergency survival knife. So if their plane goes down, uh, or if they find themselves in a, an emergency situ situation, they have the, this Falkneven F1 knife with them. The materials and the choice of materials that have been used to build that knife make it impervious to like heat, to like oil, to jet fuel, all the types of things you can imagine a fighter pilot might be encountering if they find themselves in a survival situation. This is a very similar knife to that F1. It's, it's in a similar range. The, the, the sheath is made from a material called Zytel, which is a super high technical plastic nylon composite. Um, I think there's some fiberglass and things in there as well. But yeah, so it's impervious to oil, it's impervious to heat. Um, it's going to be super, super robust. If it gets wet, it's not going to soak and it's not going to soak the knife. So the water will just run off it. So this is the knife itself here. I'll get a close up of it for you guys. This is the handle material is called Thermaron. And again, another like super high end sort of technical rubber, rubberized plastic. The steel is a cobalt laminate steel and the knife is coated in a tungsten carbide coating, so it makes it really hard and really tough. This is the ultimate survival knife, in my opinion. Um, it may not look anything too flashy or too big or anything, but if I was stuck in a survival situation, I would love to have this with me. Um, because this one doesn't require, this blade doesn't require too much maintenance. That coating, the steel choice, um, the the rubberized handles and the, and the the Zytel sheet and things. Doesn't need a lot of maintenance. I'm not gonna have to worry about it getting wet or getting spilled on or anything like that. And um, yeah, and that's that's something that I would think is an important factor when it comes to survival blades. On the other end of the scale, we have, um, we saw this earlier. This is the, my um, Martini custom blade. This is for all intents and purposes, a very traditional looking blade. This is based off a kind of a traditional Finnish Pukko knife. Uh, it's got a leather sheath. Um, the material on the handle, that's uh, birch and um, antler. Very simple carbon steel. Um, this, this requires a lot of maintenance actually. This will rust really easily um, in, in like extreme temperatures and heat and things. These materials on the handle, they can warp, they can soak up wood, or they can soak up water rather. Um, and the leather sheath as well, if that gets wet and then you have your knife in there, uh, your knife will get wet and that might rust and you know deteriorate the blade if you don't look after it or, or kind of nip it in the bud. Um, but I would not be depending on this if my life, or I would not want to do the, you know, hang my life off this blade. Um, of course, if I if it was the only knife I had, I could absolutely make do with it. But it's just, it's just interesting because I think materials is something that, uh, that we need to kind of consider. Um, I will just quickly, requisite that with saying that something like the Mora Companion, which is for all intents and purposes a very traditional bushcraft knife, as I said, this was the first bushcraft knife I ever owned. I mean, that's not traditional materials, that's plastic and rubber, um, and it's a carbon steel, of course, um, but it's not it's not traditional um, materials at all. So that definitely doesn't fall under the criteria of traditional materials. So as I said, there is a middle ground but if you are trying to think of a criteria to base your um, your categorization on them, materials is definitely something that you can take into uh, into account, although it's not the only factor, of course. The final factor, I think, to consider um, when you're basing, when you're trying to decide if your knife is a bushcraft knife or a survival knife is weight. Um, it's literally how heavy the blade is, how big the chunk of steel you have in your hand is. Um, and again, of course, there are exceptions to this rule. For example, the, the SE4, considered an extremely good, versatile survival knife. It's got, a, it's got, it's got that flat grind that we were looking for. It's, um, it's, co it's a coated blade, so you're not gonna be worrying about it rusting on you. It's got very kind of technical, robust materials. Quite a light blade, actually. Um, but generally, the bigger the knife, um, the more steel you're going to have under your, under your, in, in your hand. Again, it, of course, it depends on the quality of the blade. You don't want to be going and buying those gas station blades that look like something Rambo would carry. That's not a good indicator of it being a survival blade itself. Um, but if you factor it into the other things that we've been talking about, and I'm, 
assuming that uh, you know the actual money that's been spent on this blade although not all knives have to cost money but generally the more expensive they get the better quality they're going to be um, but an exception to that for example this is the k-bar bk2 um, i would consider probably one of the best survival blades ever made it's just a big chunk of steel you can see just how thick the back of the spine of that blade is um, it's going to be hefty in the hand you know it's good for you know i can put my hand back here and like there's a lot of weight uh in the steel so i can chop with it for example if i'm beating the back of it through a piece of wood i'm not going to worry about it uh snapping or breaking and um, the way i might do with a with a with a bushcraft knife so i think weight and bulk and size can be a huge deciding factor as to whether or not your knife is considered a survival tool or a bushcraft tool also to consider is the fact that this is a full tang blade and what that means is that the steel goes all the way down the knife it's not just you know a a sharp bit like stuck into a handle the steel goes all the way down the blade and it's literally got these kind of scales or handles stuck on each side of it and we if we compare that for example to uh the mora companion this is not a full tang blade it's much much more narrow um it's much more likely to snap um if i'm hitting it through a piece of wood or if I'm prying something I mean with the k-bar I could literally hammer this into a, into a tree and stand on it put my full weight on it and um, I would not do that with this and this is not full tang this is the blade kind of ends somewhere around here and stuck into the actual um, the the handle itself so it's not a full piece of steel the way we have with the k-bar um, so yeah so that's that's definitely something that you need to consider when um, you're deciding as to whether which category that your knife maybe falls into. So guys, I really hope that was helpful. Hopefully it wasn't too long-winded. Um, let me know if it was too long or like you would like to get into more detail because I'm trying to figure out uh, with these videos what is the best sort of the middle ground for, for sort of delivering uh, quality information for you guys without being too rambly, which I do have a tendency to do. So let me know what you think. And also, you know, this isn't, these, are, these aren't hard and fast rules. Everybody has their own criteria, but for me, I think that's just a, a good guiding principle. Um, if I'm looking at a new blade and I'm trying to consider or think about which category it falls into um, and what its best uses might be. Oh, completely open to debate with this. So let me know uh, what you guys think or what you consider to be deciding factors uh, with your blades. I'm gonna get back to my fire, uh, enjoy my afternoon in the woods. And uh, yeah, well, I hope to see you guys very soon for another video. Thanks for watching and um, yeah, take care.